talk to me about a God who created the atom. That's right. Who upholds the universe. Who invented light. Who painted every color. Who invented the human mind. Why couldn't he then have made a universe that didn't get itself into such a mess? Couldn't God have made beings that didn't sin, that didn't destroy each other? My answer may shock you. Of course he could. <coughs> of course he could. We make them, you know. In laboratories, we call them robots. Of course you can make beings that are non-moral. But now, I have a wife, and I've been married to the same one for 44 years, which isn't bad, is it? <laughs> now, you imagine if I had a robotic wife. A very sophisticated one with the, with the proper screen and, you know, all the kind of sophisticated iPad technology. So I go back from Rice University and my wife comes to the door. There's the screen all glowing and I see a word marked kiss. So I go, kiss. And I get a beautiful robotic kiss. <laughs> well, why are you laughing? But you say, would that be a real kiss? Well, they're making robots that are very similar to human beings these days. But you know that it wouldn't be real because there's no choice in the matter. She's programmed to do what she does. Now, let me explain it carefully. Of course God could make a universe with creatures in it that in that sense cannot sin. There are loads of them, animals. When the lion eats your head off in the zoo because you put it between the bars, we don't put him in the high court. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I think C.S. Lewis helped me a great deal here. I don't think it's the final answer, but it's a way in to see that in order to make beings that have the capacity to love, they must have the capacity to hate. If you're going to have the capacity to say yes, you must have the capacity to say no. And you say, well, why did God do that? Why do you have children? Never forget holding my first child in my arms and realizing that I have brought this little girl into the world. She could grow up to say no to me. Why take the risk? Do you ever think about it? Why do we do it, ladies and gentlemen? Because we realize that granted the risk, the benefits outweigh the risk. To live in a world where love is possible, we all crave for a world in which love is actualized. And you hope one day, maybe you've already got there, you students at Rice, that you'll meet somebody and fall in love with them and they'll fall in love with you and they'll value you and they'll choose you. And the value of that, and you know that it's got an inherent risk. God took a risk to make a universe with people in it, made in his image, capable of choosing capable of saying yes to God and equally capable of saying no, moral beings. One of the big questions that rises is justice. Now, Dawkins says there is no justice. And if atheism is true, ladies and gentlemen, the vast majority of people will never get justice. And if there is no life after this life, there's no life to get justice in. So they will never get justice. And yet our human hearts, they cry out for justice. They sense that we live in a moral universe, that there must be something somewhere. Otherwise, our notion of justice is a sheer illusion. 
and it mocks us. What can atheism say in the context of massive injustice? Hitler murders six million Jews and then he takes a gun and he blows his head off and he's got away with it because he will never have to face any ultimate question of responsibility. Is that true? I think there's something in every human being that says that cannot be true. Now, of course, a feeling in our hearts that something cannot be true doesn't mean it isn't true. But as C.S. Lewis pointed out, it would be very strange. If in a world where we find ourselves with an appetite for food, there was no food. In a world where we find an appetite for sex, there was no sex. In a world where we find we have an appetite for friendship and justice and morality, there was none. He said it would be a very strange world. And Richard Dawkins said to me once, yes, the picture I paint is bleak, but that doesn't mean it's false. I said, Richard, it doesn't mean it's true either. 